Oh, this paper is so cool, but it's getting so overhyped. Okay, just to dispel some myths, you can't wear a device that controls your genes. You can't use electricity to control your genes. I promise. You, you can't do that. So I'm going to dispel some myths in this video. Let's roll some clips of some YouTube channels talking about this topic. We could wear a watch-like device that could trigger regular insulin production. A machine could take over for our failing DNA and keep our blood sugar levels in check. Imagine telling the genes that are causing cancer to just stop. Imagine pressing a button and suppressing a rare genetic condition. Which may lead to future medical breakthroughs where gene therapy can be delivered through wearable devices. That's pretty, that's actually pretty cool. This all sounds fantastic and kind of like a Black Mirror episode. I would love to be able to press a button and remove a genetic disorder or for gene therapy to be able to be delivered through a wearable device. I don't know what that really means. But of course, there's this one huge thing everybody is missing. Today, we're going to discuss this recent development of electronic control of human genes. Welcome to DIY Biotech. This paper was published in Nature Metabolism. If you're outside of academia, Nature and Science are, you know, the gold standard. That's where you want to go. But they both have their sort of sub journals. So Nature Metabolism is good, but it isn't a gold star. And my goal here isn't to downplay this work. Nature Metabolism is a great journal, and the developments in this paper are really are groundbreaking. I think it's just being blown out of proportion a little bit. It's also a genuinely good paper. You know, it's framed really nicely, and I think this is what a lot of scientists miss when they're publishing articles, is that they don't frame it in a context that everybody cares about, right? So this paper was framed around using wearables to control gene expression, and I think that's why so many news outlets picked it up and are translating it a bit wrong. But I think in general, it's good that news outlets are picking this up because people need to be interested and excited about science. The other thing that they did pretty well is the acronym. So they say it's DART or DC Actuated Regulation Technology. So it really should be DCART. Uh, it's better than a lot of acronyms in academia. I give it a solid 7 out of 10. I'll link the paper in the description below if you want to read it for yourself, but the gist of the paper is that the researchers were able to control an insulin production gene in diabetic mice with DC voltage. Pretty groundbreaking stuff. Genetic engineering in humans is a bit of a controversial topic, but there are already genetic engineering therapies being used in humans, and a lot of them are in FDA approval stages, which is pretty cool. But I think as a society, what we've decided on is to go after relatively simple genetic engineering targets first, which is probably smart. The biggest example would be sickle cell anemia. So sickle cell anemia is caused by just one base pair change in the DNA. So if we can just swap that base pair back, then we can have a healthy human, right? And this is relatively easy compared to a lot of other genetic engineering challenges. And to be clear here, all genetic engineering treatments that we have now and that we're working on now are on somatic cells, so body cells. They're not germline cells. It doesn't affect our offspring. And in general, I think genetic engineering can be a good thing and it probably will be a very good thing, but it does take a lot of time to make sure that it's safe and effective. One of the big arguments of this paper was that they're able to achieve transient or tunable gene expression. So the analogy that everybody is using is that you can use a wearable device that's programmed to turn on your insulin genes or turn off your insulin genes if you're diabetic whenever you need. And transient gene expression is really, really cool. It is used industrially if you're working with genetic engineered yeast or bacteria, and it's a popular topic in, in the sort of genetic engineering, bioengineering space. Uh, but it does come with a lot of challenges. Often you have to have a biosensor 
and a synthetic promoter, and you have to insert you know, this big cassette of the biosensor and the synthetic promoter upstream of your target gene, rather than you know, constitutive expression or you know, temporary expression where you can just knock out a gene completely, or you can just overexpress a gene by changing some promoter features or you know, inserting another copy of the gene, uh, transient expression is just in general much harder. Of course, there are niche scenarios where you need to have transient gene expression or it's incredibly helpful to have transient gene expression. But in humans, it's a huge challenge. So having a wearable that you could just turn genes on and off would be world changing. So that brings me to what a lot of news outlets are missing about this paper. And that is you have to genetically engineer the human in order to have the wearable working. So the team used a biosensor and a synthetic promoter and an insulin production gene and integrated that into the mouse first. And then they connected their simple electrode system to turn the genes on and off. So this is why I think it's so ridiculous when a news outlet says you can press a button and turn off cancer, right? Because you have to do all of this genetic engineering before you can press that button. So why not just remove the cancer in the first place instead of having this complex system for your own cells to go and turn it off? Or the other clip where the guy said you can deliver gene therapy through wearable devices. No, you have to genetically engineer the person first and then you can turn those genes that are genetically engineered on or off. Again, I don't wanna downplay this research. I think this is a, a really big breakthrough for the field of bioengineering in general but we're not gonna have an Apple Watch update anytime soon that turns your genes on and off. What do you think? Am I being pessimistic or am I being optimistic? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to share this video so that other people know uh, that the hype isn't all there about this paper. And be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel below. It really helps the channel grow. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.